Hi folks, I was going to talk to you today just a little bit about um, things you can use to make pattern or texture on your jelly plates. And a lot of these things you might have thought of already, but some of them you may not have. So um, I thought I'd just share with you some of the things I've been using or I'm going to use. And um, I was lucky enough to win in, in the the Jelly Arts uh, giveaway one week, one of these little six inch plates, which is a lot of fun because you can make little cards and things with it, which is, is um, nice when you don't want to get the full, the, the big plate out and you just want to play with a few bits and pieces. This is an ideal size to do it with, so um, I'm really, really happy to have this. And one of the things I have been doing is making some cards and I've been experimenting also, another part of my prize was that I got some um, canvas boards and I've been experimenting with doing texture onto these to make texture plates and as you can see I've used a variety of different things. The main thing I've used was golden modelling paste um, which is absolutely lovely to use. It's very smooth and easy to spread, so I can recommend that one. Um, I've used a variety of things on here to get these textures. This is the modelling paste through a stencil at this side. That was also um, part of a stencil, which I just again put modelling paste through. Over here, I've used something a bit different. I've also got, in addition to the modelling paste, oh, that's not it, I've put it away somewhere, but I have got something that comes in a tub like those, those mediums, well it is one of the mediums, and it's called glass bead gel. And you may be able to see on there what it looks like. It is basically a matte medium with lots of tiny little ceramic beads in it, or glass beads, I'm not sure which they are. But they're very, very tiny and they make a sort of grainy texture on the top of the plate. And it's just another thing you can try to add a bit of texture to your jelly plates. Um, that You just put a coat of it on and then let it dry, obviously just the same as you would with any other medium. On this one, I've used modelling paste again through stencils. But on this end of it, I don't know how well you can see that, but I tried some crackle paste on that side. That's a golden one again, like the um, in one of those little tubs. And it's just golden crackle paste. And you put it on and let it dry. And as it dries, it produces these fine cracks. The thicker you put it on, the more cracks it will produce. I haven't used it particularly thickly on there, but it has produced a nice cobweb of, of cracks. So um, I don't know how much use that will be because they're, ve they're very fine cracks and they're not very deep. So I think they'll probably quite quickly fill up with paint once I've used it a few times. But I just thought it was another thing to try out and um, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna do some printing with them in a minute so you'll be able to see what it looks like. The third plate I did is um, quite uh, minimal on texture. This again is moulding paste, and what I did was just spread a very thin layer onto the onto the um, canvas board, and then I just used the edge of a the edge of a card to just stamp into it, and. Um, in the middle I used um, uh, bubble wrap, that is, that's just bubble wrap that I pressed into it. You can't see an awful lot of texture on that and I haven't tried it out yet so I'm not quite sure how well that will work on the jelly plate. But I'll try it and see, it's worth a go. Um, so those are those. Other things that are fun to use some of which I might have shown you before, in fact I'm pretty sure I have, but I'll show you again anyway. Uh, bubble wrap, you can get this in all sorts of sizes. And this is really nice if you just press it into the paint, it makes nice circular, um, sort of broken circular designs in it. 
an egg carton or half an egg carton. Um, the bottom part, as you can see, I've used this before, makes a really cool sort of stencil, well, impression, stamp, not, not a stencil, a stamp. And that's, that's quite interesting. You can also use the top bit for um, <clears throat> just random little sort of vaguely circular patterns. Other things I've got are the base off a pizza and that's one of my favourite ones actually because that's got that really nice mesh pattern on it. Now all of these things are you know just leftovers from what you'd have around the house or um, just things you can pick up along the way. I think the important thing with, with using any of this stuff is to just have an open mind when you're looking at things. Start looking at your packaging or at um, things that you get which are uh, containers for stuff. I mean, you can use the bottom of a, a bottle to make impressions into the jelly plate. Um, you can stamp with that if you just put, you know, either put paint on it or just stamp into the painted plate. You can use bits of sponge you can either cut it into shapes, this is just a random piece of sponge I have, but you can cut shapes out of it and just use that. I've got one of these, um, which is one of my favourite tools. One of these little things which was out of a kid's art set. And it's it's just it's just a little sponge on a stick, but it makes really nice circular patterns on things. So that's one of my favourite things to use also. Um, Bit of card it's just a bit of corrugated card obviously when you get it it's like that but if you peel off the backing well the the, the paper layer there you don't have to peel it off all the way because you get some interesting effects if you leave bits stuck to it and again that's great to press into paint or to coat with paint and print onto something just gives you a really nice um, you know set of lines to look at and something else which I've just recently acquired, which I've had before things like this, but I've just got a new bunch, is um, bits of embossed anaglypta type paper, wallpaper. If you go to the the um, decorator shop, the or, or you know one of the the home decorating places, nearly everywhere you go now, where where they've got wallpaper, they'll they'll just have have sample rolls out that you can just tear a bit off and take home with you. And um, so I've been collecting a few of those. I've got that one, which is you can't. You can, got some lovely textured um, pattern on it, and leaves and swirly bits. That's the same pattern, but it's it's got um, that's one with a lovely big flower on it. Then there's a, a sort of feather and fan pattern, which I think will be nice. And that which I really liked, which is just a. I don't know how well that's showing up actually on the camera, but it's just a lot of lines basically, and um, just sort of wavy lines like almost like seaweed or something under the water. So I thought those would be nice to try out as well. Those you could put, you could put one of those uh, any bits of uh, wallpaper you collect. You could easily put onto. Just a piece of scrap cardboard or you know or if you wanted something a bit more permanent one of these i probably won't bother because um what i plan to do when i've got them thoroughly coated in paint is is just have them so that i can add them into a piece of collage or something once i've once i've got fed up with using them all they, they're starting to get a bit ratty and they've got lots of nice paint all over them i'll i'll just use them as collage papers but in the meantime, they can do for printing on the jelly plate. Um, so that's that's a very basic and easy to get hold of collection of things, and um, something you can try. Just have an open mind, as I say, when you're going around looking at stuff, and think anything that's got an interesting texture or an interesting pattern on it. Um, just think about what you could use it for. Absolutely anything is, is is usable for printing, really. And um, providing it's something you don't mind getting paint all over. You know, the sky's the limit, really. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I was going to show you anyway. And I'll, I'll 
I'm going to do a few prints now just to see so you can see exactly um, how these things work in practice.
okay that's um, all of that's tried out then really so this is the results and I think of all the things I've tried out today I think this deeply embossed wallpaper is probably my favourite because it produces a lovely pattern on the, the um, paper that one's not so easy to see because I've used this buff print making paper on it but um, you can maybe just catch the the design on that one. Some of the others I've used it on have come up a bit better. That's got metallics on, obviously. Um, that's another one with several layers on. And I just like that. It reminds me of a batik or something like that. You know, maybe you've seen batik fabrics, which often have these quite intricate um, tonal designs on them, and I, I like the look of that one. That's the same piece of wallpaper, but I've used the leaves on that one. And um, I like that too. And bubble wrap and some corrugated card. Flower again. That one's a bit clear, you can actually see the flower. But yeah, it does it really does remind me of batik fabric that. And it's um, very pretty. And another one with just a faint bit of gold on it or oh, copper actually I think that was and then that one that was the other wallpaper the um, the one curiously the one I thought might have a really nice pattern on it turns out not to show up that much that's the that one um, doesn't perhaps because it's not very deeply embossed it doesn't seem to show up that much when you take a print off it but it's quite nice for a back, just a bit of background texture. The emboss, embossing plates, um, I've got mixed feelings about these. They don't produce quite as crisp and clear an image as I would like. And I think that's probably largely my fault because I think I've probably got the depth not consistent overall. So some bits, some bits are going further into the paint and some bits aren't hardly making contact with it. This one's not too bad. But I think that one, you can see there where it's a bit hit and miss where it picks up the paint. And um, that one I made which had very little texture on. That one seems to do a bit better, but again, it's not fabulous. I think if I'm going to use these again, I would probably um, make some more and do them with, you know, slightly more even coverage of emboss of um, modeling paste on them because they're okay but um, they're not my favorite thing to use I have to say but you know you try them out if you get a chance and try it for yourself and see because you might well find that um, you, you can do much better than I did um, and uh, you might get some really great results off them but do also try wallpaper because I'm really quite pleased with how those have come out and that um, that one there is nice, that makes a nice sort of uh, all over pattern too. So yeah, um, the one thing I think I would say about these that I think will be terrific is when I've got some more paint build up on them, I think they'll be really nice as little pieces in their own right those, and get lots of different colour build up on it. I think they'll look quite nice as just little um, mixed media pieces as they are, even if you don't use them as plates. So anyway, I hope that's um, been of some use to you or of interest to you. And um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.